the robots are coming, Steve. I am a robot. <laughs> <laughs> but then again, the robots have always been coming. Uh, this is a question I get more every day. How long until AI takes over music and stops us all from making music income? Uh, and my answer is usually the same. And we will get into those answers today. Uh, not just the easy things like stock music and how AI might influence that income stream, which is what most people are scared of, but what is even going on with that income stream right now? We need to talk about that. I think everybody is asking, asking me that question, and we'll talk a bit about that. But uh, will it affect sync licensing? I think this answer is a bit more clear to me. Um, what about other music incomes? What about working for clients, what, being a producer? What about teaching? What about live performance? Where do all these things fit in with AI? As you know, on this channel, we talk more than just about one income. We talk about them all, all music incomes. So I think there's a little bit more to uh, this whole question about AI and where it fits into how we're going to make music income. The robots may be coming for us all, but how will that affect us in our music. So to help answer this question, I turn to my completely human podcast partner, as far as you know, Mr. Stevie B. What is going on there? I can't wait to have there. an AI version of myself replicated so I can do this podcast while also making breakfast at the same time, you know? It's multi I think StreamYard is coming up with a uh, AI uh, host uh, thing, so we'll have that soon. <laughs> Um, oh, that's another one I forgot about. I got to put Spotify on here because there's there's, there's oh, yeah. AI coming to Spotify as well. So. Oh, we'll talk. We'll talk about it all today. So what's uh, been the, going on over your world there, over in the Matrix? Well, um, I've had a good week, man. Been busy. I, I've been uh, finishing up the last module of the uh, the Trailer Music Trilogy course. Uh, the last module is all about making a, uh, a remix of a popular song into a trailerized version of it. Um, as you know, I've done a few of those in the past, um, working on another one at the moment, pretty excited about it. Uh, did an epic two hour plus oh, long, long stream yesterday. It was exhausting, man. I was like, actually, I kind of had a headache after it was, it was all over. Cause I was like, I think I just looked at the screen for way too long there. Um, <clears throat> yeah, that was leave. the long, I had to leave like right after I, I was talking to, um, our friend Andreas before that, and he was in on that uh, thing, and we were talking, and then he left to go do your 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 massive uh, live, and I left, went out, went got something to eat, blah, 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 went to went to the school, <laughs> turned on my computer two hours later, and you're like, this is a really long live. It was still going on. It was the longest one I've ever done <laughs> by far. Um, but man, I was so stoked that so many people submitted something for it and it was a tough challenge. So I got to really give the, uh, the members of the Academy props for, uh, for stepping up. So many of the members tackled trailer music for their first time, yeah. which is tough. It's intimidating. So, um, yeah, I was really impressed and I had a lot of fun. Um, what else was going on? I finally finished my love song singer songwriter project for uh art list originals you've heard me like i feel like you've heard me whine about that for so, for yeah, like three months a now time coming. finally finished it <clears throat> um so they got that out of the way and uh working on another uh, originals project at the moment um which is kind of like a funky uh baseline inspired project pretty cool, cool. um i finished that cubase uh, content as well. And, uh, the marketing, uh, director, he got back to me. He says, I received it watching it. I'll get back to you with some feedback. I still haven't heard anything. I don't know if that's a, a good, good or a bad thing. <laughs> I liked it. I th I was proud of it. Uh, thanks, hopefully no thanks. Steve. Yeah. Yeah. I know after all of that, there's like, yeah, I'm not really sure. We're not so sure. <laughs> I'll be like, okay. Back to logic for you. Okay. Back to logic. <laughs> um, I am working on a mixing course for the Academy. That's my next big project. Um, slowly chipping away at that. I've successfully outsourced my uploading Ooh. to libraries. I've, uh, Congratulations. Yeah, I'm working with somebody who's really stoked be, to be doing some virtual assistance um, for me. And I'm, yeah, you know, I mean, it's, it's great for me because it, now it means that like I can finally get my tracks up onto song trader. 
Um, you know, those kinds of things that I've just mm -hmm. really been slacking on for. Did you figure that, did you get that figured out? I finally figured it out. Yeah, I was a little convoluted song trader, yeah. um, but uh, I did figure that all out. And um, yeah, it's getting, stuff's getting uploaded to Audio Jungle. <laughs> I'm back oh, on right. AJ. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Pond5 um, and a few other places uh, just for like kind of, you know, less music library, but more administrative stuff. Like I'm having, um, I'm having uh, my assistant uh put my stuff up on disco and, um, you know, uh, sorted yeah. out on, on those yeah. kinds of things, uh, on my, uh, PRO, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, got a big gig tomorrow here in Vancouver. We, um, we've sold it out. We sold out the hall that we've, uh, rented. Uh, cool. My band Wooden Horseman is, um, is doing a show with, uh, our friends, Jody Peck and Antonio La Rosa here in, in Vancouver. And uh, I'm really excited about it. Almost a little nervous. We haven't played like a, a real big show like this in quite some time. Um, and, uh, yeah, I got to go over the tunes today, get my voice all warmed up, uh, for it. And, um, you know, are you the lead singer in your group? I am. Yeah. Yeah. So, man, you know, it, it's funny cause like I, since post, COVID, I haven't really been out in big crowds too much. I feel like I'm going to get like mentally overwhelmed being there in front of hundreds of people. A lot of folks I haven't seen in a, in a while. I'm going to be doing a lot of socializing. It'll be good for me. It'll be good for me. But uh, I think I've become more uh, antisocial uh, yeah. over time. And uh, I'm trying, I guess I'm going to have to deal with that. Um, yeah. And also uh, went to Palm Springs with uh, with my wife. Uh, last week, took a little bit of time off and uh, got some sunshine in the desert. I think my tan is wearing off now, uh, but man, it was good to get away uh, from, from the Vancouver raininess for a bit and go yeah. explore um, the desert for a bit. It was really cool. That sounds cool. Yeah. So that's yeah, cool. that's about it. Well, the summer's just starting here. Um, so I, my tan should, should come back here very soon. I do a lot of, uh, of sitting in the sun during the summer. So excited for that. And the pool, I just got in the pool for the first time yesterday. So the pool is getting back warm enough to get in. Do you drain uh, the pool like but, during, during the, like the winter mm -hmm. months? No, it's just always. No, I mean, it depends on the day. I mean, you could still get in the pool. It's just cold. Um, it, right. but it's not cold. Like it is up there, you know, yeah, you yeah. guys have to drain pools and stuff up there. And, and even up in Kentucky, we had to do that, but here. Now nah, you keep it going all year round, keep it in good shape. We used to have a cover we put on it, but we don't do that anymore. Um, I've had a good week. Speaking of uh, of Audio Jungle, I had an Audio Jungle rejection this week. I oh, yeah? had one of those in a while. But I had another Motion Array acceptance. Um, and then um, I'm also still working on, just like you're still working on some of those things, I'm working on the uh, three country tunes. Uh, it seems like I'm in a never ending country a whole of country music uh, that I have to finish, but uh, waiting for three, some, some vocals on these tunes that I wrote the top lines for. And then um, lots of Spotify. I am, this is the year of Spotify, I think as well for me. I am, I've put at least 20 to 40 songs on Spotify, a couple albums, two or three albums, mm -hmm. and I'm just continuing every, uh, I got a new album about to come out in April. It's kind of an Easter album, kind of piano songs. Mm -hmm. So another piano record coming out uh, April 3rd. And uh, just continuing to st I put something up of my, uh, I put a lot of my corporate music up. I put um, uh, Orchestronic Stories, which is a kind of thing that I have some of those signed to libraries and some of them not. Some of them are in stock libraries. So I put that album up. Um, and I'm just going to be putting up albums all year. I just want to get it all out, just like we've talked about on this channel. I want to get all those songs out to Spotify. So, cool. working on that. Um, I have a new ebook that uh, that people watching this channel may have heard of. It's called Getting in Sync, um, and you can find that over at MakeMusicIncome.com/slash/GettingInSync. I'm really excited about that. So, if you are looking for that, you can find it in the link below. And for uh, for for fairness in the broadcast here is the link for the production music academy if you so he does not have a getting in sync ebook only it's, it's only make music income.com has the getting in sync ebook but uh released that this week and that has been going well and a couple different things there um i'm working on a classical tune that i showed off to my mastermind today called uh five reasons that is kind of uh, this classical piece i don't it doesn't have any licensing use at all 
I don't even know. Hmm. You know, it's one of those that I'm. It, it probably has the most use to a high school or a college concert band, mm-hmm. and uh, probably made for that kind of thing. So I'll probably push it in that direction. Um, I'm also working on a song with a guy named Stevie B, but I haven't heard back from him in a long time. I sent him a song, and I he just he just kind of ignored it. Um, I saw that. And so, I, I got it on the to-do list. <laughs> I got it on the to-do list. It's like, so record bass for Eric. I don't know it's, how it's how on there. Gonna go. It's on there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I also am working on a, 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 a video for my keyboard channel. Not many people know I have a keyboard channel, uh, but I, I do I a, a, a kind of a... Um, uh, reviews from time to time and I'm reviewing this keyboard back here you can't see it back there um, my M audio pro hammer pro 88 which I'm about to sell and uh, try to find and continue on my quest for the perfect 88 note keyboard for uh, keyscape and for plugins and things and so that's my week so let's now segue over to today's um, topic and uh just in case i didn't make this clear this is episode 60 of the make music income podcast and this is our obligatory ai episode you've been waiting for it or if you haven't and you've been listening to everyone else's obligatory ai episode uh (laughs) we, we both have felt the pressure to make a video but didn't really want to but i think it's important for us to talk about i'm starting to get a lot of questions about Um, artificial intelligence and how that is affecting music, but especially music income things that we talk about on this channel. So we thought this would be the day we talk about it. And uh, I'm just going to start with the low hanging fruit here. And that is AI versus stock. Um, There are a lot of people who are involved in the stock music licensing community that are putting stuff up to Audio Jungle or Pond5 or to Motion Array, any of these places. And they are concerned that some of the tools that are coming out um, will make it easy for uh, computers to just to generate stock music, and this will continue the decline of stock music that's it's been on since the heydays of the mid-teens uh, when you started uh, stock music, and 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 we're seeing some good money. And as, and as you know, if you follow this channel, Steve also saw good money last year, and I think it's a good time to really just talk about stock and where things are. We don't talk about it as much on this podcast anymore, but um, it's been a, it's a, someone just asked me today, uh, Matthias was in our, um, uh, our mastermind today and he's like, has, have you seen really lower prices? I mean, lower downloads on, uh, on January and February, especially at Motion Array, but everywhere. Um, and I, I've seen it across the board and everybody has been talking about it that I know mm-hmm. who is part of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the thing is that this is normally a very, very slow time of the year for stock. It's after Christmas. Nobody is making any super big yeah, videos are, and stuff. People are chilling out a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's uh, it's certainly been slow for me. I think it's funny because last I remember last year I had a good January and February on stock um, sites, but this year has been very slow. Uh, Motion Array has been is kind of you know I think I'm doing better than than the average. A uh, person on on Motion Array because of some of my older uh, catalog is still kind of uh, picking up, is still getting downloaded, um, but it's yeah you know it's slow. Someone asked me on the stream yesterday how how I'd be doing on Motion Array in, in particular, and uh, last you know January and February were, were 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 slow. They're they're low months, but that is the case every year. We I get a handful of uh, low payouts and then and a, and then a handful of, of big ones, and it kind of you know. They all even out to be an uh, an average that's sure. decent. So we'll see how it goes throughout the year. But you're right in saying that January and February, I think, are, are pretty slow. February was my lowest month last year. And so far, it is this year. Both of January and February have to combine for me to even get a payment uh, from Motion Array. Yeah. But so, uh, But I will get one. I didn't get one last month. But uh, again, I have not been paying much attention to that. Every once in a while, I will just take a, a minute and go through and and, and look at totals and stuff, and it's not good for this year so far. Uh, but again, I'm not really concentrating on that much. I have uploaded three things over the past three weeks to Motion Array, only because that's the only place I can think of that they would go. Um, I just, as you may or may not know by listening to this podcast, I develop songs as I develop them. Whatever strikes me, whatever I'm on about to finish, I will finish. And I just have a list. There's really no order. I don't know how you determine which song to finish. I mean. 
if it's a client ask thing or an art list originals thing where you have a deadline or you know you have to get it in that's different but for songs that you just make out of your own brain nobody's expecting it you think it might do good or might not do good whatever you just have the song which i just put it up there i don't even there's no plan necessarily unless there is unless you're like okay i'm going to make a corporate tune i'm going to focus it on corporate -y sound or, or rock or whatever to try to do well in this particular library but um mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that i don't know if that's helping or hurting it doesn't seem to be doing that great for me in stock but i'm, I'm not really worried about it because i'm focused on other things yeah well it was same here and and the, the honestly it's like i've been so uh <clears throat> i've been so focused on on the academy and then also just creating uh content for artlist originals that i haven't really had a chance to put much music up to audio jungle and pond five i've been so absent from those libraries over the last you know year and a half um i'm curious to see what happens as i start uploading there more now that i have a bit of help um we'll see we'll see what happens i mean I, I'm, I mean the prices are low i'm i'm, I'm doing that whole thing you know five yeah. bucks a track basically on pond five yeah. in hopes that it'll just generate more sales but uh it'll be uh it'll be exper an experiment that we'll have to kind of revisit later uh you know either six months to a year or something like that we'll see what happens but um yeah, I mean, I've been pretty focused on on uh, creating material for Artlist Originals because that is like kind of a guaranteed money maker for me. So, so what do you think about AI and 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 stock music licensing uh, libraries? Do you think that AI? I think likely, and, and I don't mean to be uh, a, a doom a doomsayer uh, on this but it, if it's if ai is going to affect one of the things we're going to talk about a lot i think it's this one i think it is it is very possible that people could go and use websites in the future that are not stock music libraries but that are ai generated libraries and because they just need something and they could put in their own terms and it would just crank out something and they'd be fine with that what are your thoughts on that <clears throat> well, it's funny because because some of these sites already exist, right? Like they, you have like these these AI generated supposedly AI generated uh, stock sites, and I've 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 kind of taken a look at a few of them, um, and it's, it's curious because some of them I suspect are not actually AI; they're just kind of pre-recorded loops <laughs> that are being thrown together, and it's like they have the little wheel being like, "We are generating your track." I'm just like, I don't <laughs> think this is actually AI. I think it's actually just like pre-recorded stuff that's being thrown together and it's all it sounds pretty dinky like at this point in time it doesn't sound great um and so i mean you know i i get the question a lot and i see a lot of people's concern um over uh over it i get it um you know and i don't think that we're far away from from uh from ai being able to kind of throw like simple loops together in the sense that like a, in the in the same way that you hear these kind of simple loops being thrown together and put on a on a, on Pond Five and an Audio Jungle, right? I mean, it's like I could grab a few loops from from Splice and put it together almost as fast as as an AI could, and then just upload it to Pond Five. I mean, the, the tools are already there to make really really yeah. simple music, right? I was going to say that I think AI is already in stock. It's being uh, there's a certain amount of AI that Logic has, um, and yeah. the drummer track in Logic is. AI basically it's it, it's it's you're telling it I want it to be kind of upbeat I want it to be kind of complex I yeah, want exactly. there to be this many fills and drummer makes that happen so there's already AI tech built into a lot of the dolls that we're using that is listening to things if you think about um, uh, ozone AI tech I mean you're you're telling it listen to this and make it better and it does it without you barely having to do anything and so or presets you know are, are a fact but especially the listening part where it listens to your track and then applies what it needs to apply to it so uh and, and then i just saw that uh a, a distro kid has a new mastering feature where it listens to your song and masters it and so right. it's basically ai mastering so but i think it, as far as stock goes you're going to i don't think we're that far away from it just in the stuff that's being made however this is where your interview with um, with Motion Array comes into play here with the whole stock thing. 
What did they say they like most about the tracks that they're accepting a lot now? They have what vocals, kind of element? Vocals and, and organic, you know, human generated human material. Element. And yeah. I, there's a reason why he said that. There's a reason. And there's a reason yeah. why I've been pushing, you know, trying to kind of cultivate your more artistic side when it comes to uh, writing music, uh, because simply just kind of like throwing loops together isn't going to cut it um, in in today's sync environment you know what i mean so um you're seeing this with with the stock environment too i mean when we say stock music i like i think people typically think like pond five audio jungle like those old school uh stock sites but um you know stock music or royalty free music whatever you want to call it is has kind of evolved and we've been talking about this for 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 a long time now um Artlist and Motion Ray are technically like royalty-free stock sites, I guess, in a, in a sense. They're just kind of um, trying to, you know, sell a, a, a higher quality product that is more artist-driven material. And that's and you're seeing that this discussion happen in in the sync world too. It's not just it's not just stock uh, music, right? Like you know, Jesse uh, made a video not too long ago about vocals becoming a trend in in sync music and you know i think there's a reason for all of this because we want to uh capture like more artistry and and humanity in in uh in in the music uh yeah. at this point because it's too easy to make music that uh is just kind of chucking loops together and like you said i mean it's so easy to make um uh you know, mu- like a track using uh, some of the tools that are already embedded in like Logic and mm-hmm. uh, um, and some of the plugins and stuff that we yeah, have. And it's, uh, Arcade and things like that. Exactly. They're yeah. just very um, e- easy to create something without even knowing anything about music. However, anybody who is in the stock music game uh, knows that eventually uh, Pond5, and I'm not going to say Audio Jungle because new people can't get on an Audio Jungle, but it's also quite dead uh, mm-hmm. for anyone who is in it. It's it's very slow. But um, anyone who is in the stock music and wanting to make uh, stock music income knows that you really have to be in Motion Array and you have to do well there or and or art list or someplace like that, these mid-tier type of higher-end stock music libraries. And so uh, in order to be in those, you have to create organic sounding music right now. You, it's, that is what is, is, is making it. And that is what is, is on their top sellers lists and their staff picks and all that kind of stuff. It's very organic type stuff and not just a bunch of loops. And yeah. so yeah. Uh, if you go and listen, you can <clears throat> see that. So I, I think AI, yes, it could eventually, there, someone could develop sites that, are able to develop things, and we're already using it in the tech for for music production. But uh, I think still, it's a very human. And, and again, if you're talking about making major money like you did last year, a few months uh, with Motion Array, that came from organic sounding music, not robotic sounding music. You know, I mean, maybe if you were lo-fi sounding, but you still played real guitar in them and stuff. And so, um, I think that's important to, for people to realize that, uh, it, that we're beating AI because of the quality of our performances from our person, not from our sounds. Well, well, like, I think this leads to a, like a further discussion about like, uh, you know, idea generation um, and what, <clears throat> what AI is actually doing. <clears throat> Cause there's a few things that like, I'm, I'm not so worried about uh, and the other things that I am more concerned about. Um, it's funny reading, I don't know if you ever read the comments in some of the videos that have been done. Uh, like I, I watched, uh, you know, Jesse from Sick My Music's talked about it. Uh, Daniel James made a video about it. Dave Crops talked about it. Um, a lot of the people I follow on YouTube have touched on this subject. And in the in the comments of all the videos, the 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 opinions are very polarized. Uh, and it's really really interesting to see people's kind of mindset because uh, some are like, forget it, we're done. You know, mm-hmm. it's all over. What's the point of even making music anymore? And other people are like it'll never replace us. It's like, it'll just never happen. Um, it's, it's interesting. There's not a lot of middle ground. Um, I, I kind of think that we're probably entering like a golden age of, of AI where it's going to get really interesting and it's going to be a really useful tool. I mean, it already is right. Uh, but I think it'll become more useful, uh, at least for in the, in the years to come, I think it's going to get really interesting and fun. What I'm right. concerned about 
isn't so much the isn't so much AI generating like you know really interesting ideas. I think that humans are going to have uh, that edge um, for for a long time. Um, but like I'm not I'm not overly concerned about truly sentient AI. Not even really in my lifetime, to be yeah, honest. Um, I'm not sure if that's even in my lifetime. But uh, what I am concerned about is like the like to, the, like AI um, generating like derivative content from yeah. from our pre existing material and where that kind of lands in like the legal area and like copyright infringement area and if we don't if the if like the legislative bodies don't kind of come up with some way to protect artists against the, against that then we're going to get into some really really strange territory. Yeah. Um, so I'm not sure where things are headed in that direction. And I'm a little bit concerned about that. Let's move on to AI versus sync. And, um, you know, I think this is somewhat similar, although I think in the sync world, it's going to be harder for AI to, to really, uh, be something that moves into that space because you're dealing so, so much with someone wanting you as an artist or as a, uh, composer. They're not, they are carefully, if you think Motion Array is carefully and Artlist are carefully uh, selecting who they work with, um, sync libraries and, and music supervisors are, are worrying even more about who they work with to put music in the television and film and all these things. And I think if anyone is going to be reticent to put music in uh, AI type de derived music into a film or a television show. It's going to be someone whose job depends on them not getting fired because they did the wrong thing. They used the wrong piece. Mm -hmm. Now, if we're talking about a robot based show or, you know, an AI based documentary or something, then maybe you might use something just for the, for the, for the kitschy uh, reason for it. But I think that AI probably will have less of an, uh, besides help being a tool that composers use, I think AI will be less uh, a, 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 a scary to sync licensing because of all the gatekeepers involved there. And I don't mean middlemen gatekeepers, I mean the actual library owners and or people who are, and or music supervisors who are making the decision for the show. Mm -hmm. They're going to, if anyone is looking for <clears throat> really super talented humans, it's those people. And I mean humans, not, you know, uh, they're very careful not to use, you know, uh, fake people, people who say they're, and they use a cartoon avatar. They don't, those aren't the kind of people that get selected to work with these companies in sync. What do you think about that? Well, I don't know. I mean, it's like, I, like uh, if, if anybody can, can use AI to generate like, you know, uh, like a derivative song, say like, you know, I, I sign up to some AI service in the future and, uh, or some tool and it's like, I'm like, Hey, make a song that sounds like, like Eric Copeland. And then I submit that to a music library. What, uh, you know, what protections are in place for, uh, for the person receiving the music on the other end, like the sync library to know that, you know, it's, it's actually, my material or if it's derivative you know material from like that's copying something that you've already done it's like that this is the this is the thing that i'm worried about like i'm not really um sure how that's going to work you know like how are we going to be able to tell if it's if it can just kind of pump out like a track that's like okay make a taylor swift song and it makes something that's like sounds like a taylor swift Taylor I'm just saying song. that I don't think any of the libraries I've worked with and any of the music supervisors I've seen interviewed and talk they all talk about how interested they are to work similar to Artlist or similar to uh, Motion Array with people, with real human people. In other words, they don't even want to fool around with composers who aren't artists. They want artists. They want true music making people that they not only um, that they not only communicate through with through email, but that they talk to on the phone, that they talk to through Zoom, that they meet in person. They want to go. These are the new record labels. Um, basically, and, and this is one thing I talked about in my video the other day about, you know, why sync is what you've always been waiting for is because, you know, everybody's been wanting a record deal forever. Well, music supervisors want, they're basically giving record deals. It's just instead of 
making CDs or, or albums or whatever, they're putting your show on Grey's Anatomy. And, and that is basically the new single. You're getting a play on there, plus it blows up and it blows up on Spotify and all these kind of things. So music supervisors, from my experience, are looking for humans, for really interesting bands and uh, indie artists and stuff because they want to be the first one to put them on our shows. And I don't think they're going to want to work with a person who says I am a robot and uh, I create robot music, you know, unless again, it's for a certain use. Yeah. That's I mean, just I, my thought, I, I'm just, I guess I'm looking at the deep future, you know, and I'm yeah. not, cause it, cause it, cause I, I agree with you in, in principle. I just, I just wonder, you know, if in, in the deep future, we're like, you know, we have people that, what is the deep future? 2050? Yeah. Well, th that's, that's the big question is, is, is like, you know, what is how long, uh, exactly when are things going to be at a point where you can like get AI to make the next uh, Bob Dylan song long after he's passed away, you know, that's the kind of weird future that I think we're looking at. Um, and I don't really, I, I don't really know how that's going to work when it comes to, I think to there is licensing. A, a whole digital rights thing coming, not just for music, but think of all the actors they could use Humphrey Bogart in a movie who owns, Humphrey Bogart's likeness, who owns, um, you know, yeah. any star who passes away, or, or even if they don't pass away, who owns Harrison Ford's likeness? Um, well, well, that's th know. this is that's another great question because you know I was just reading about um, about the like the the case of uh, that. There's a YouTube channel called Voice Synthesis, I believe, um, and they used Jay Z's voice, like a, vo a Jay Z voice generator, to like rap verses of the Bible, um, and Jay Z's company tried to uh take it down on on youtube and 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 initially they were successful because the argument was that they were using his likeness with the, in and it was an infringement um but actually and youtube ended up reinstating it and i believe the video is still up uh because they concluded that it wasn't actually an infringement uh because it was generating like, you know, new material and it wasn't actually his voice. So what's, so the question is like, what's the difference between, you know, what that guy's doing and finding somebody who like could really say imitate Jay-Z's voice uh, very, very closely. And then, I mean, it's like, it, it, it blurs the lines of, of, uh, of like the, the legal lines become very, very gray. Uh, so, yeah. you know, maybe you have artists like, you know, big artists who can, who can protect their their likeness to some extent but what about uh guys like you and i yeah. like we don't have that kind of um as you can tell steve is afraid of robots in the future he is afraid of digital uh royalty stealing uh ai robots oh i so i for sure i for sure am i'm for sure <laughs> i for sure am con concerned about uh, about like but i think that's just going to be like future, any other drm any other um, copyright thing that we've had to go through. We've had to do change all of our copyright language through the years for streaming and all these things. And they're all in the midst of changing, I think. Um, AI yeah, but it happens, it happens so slowly. That's, that's the yeah. problem. It's like, is, is that le the legal stuff never, it, it, it's just, it's so slow when you compare it to the speed of, at which the technology is progressing. Yeah. Um, so there's Not just really. going to be this brutal catch up period where we're going to be trying to figure things out. And meanwhile, AI is just getting better and better and better by day by day. So, um, that's what I'm concerned about. Um, not particularly worried about AI being like, you know, super better, super brilliant. I mean, you, you'd yeah. first, you'd first have to teach AI how to suffer. You know, you'd have to teach it how to suffer and, and, and to, and to like, you know, uh, have a, uh, get dumped or something like that. Can you teach AI <laughs> how not to have enough money for rent? Exactly. Um, that's what AI needs to know. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, uh, let's move on to AI versus Spotify. And of course on this channel, when we say Spotify, we mean all DSPs, all, uh, places. But, um, I just heard last week, was it that AI is, is, uh, I mean, uh, Spotify is rolling out an AI DJ. Uh, have you heard about this? That it's going to be speaking over the songs and saying who, why you might like this song and or speaking between songs. And I, I assume this is a feature you can turn on and off. But I think from what I understood from some of my students, it's already on Spotify where it is announcing the song that you are playing. Well, I'll be keeping that. Uh, I'll be keeping that uh, off on the <laughs> off say so. position. 
I would say so. Um, yeah, and I and you know this brings to mind: Will AI and is AI currently uh, how much AI is involved when you pitch a song to the to Spotify? Think how many songs get pitched per day to Spotify. Are we really thinking there's humans looking at all that data and choosing every single one of those songs for the playlist for the curated Spotify playlist? What do you think of there? I would suspect that yeah, the the editorial. Uh, Spotify curated playlists are being listened to by humans for sure, but they, they may, may have AI looking through the, the data. So for example, like they, they, they might have, they might be using AI to comb through like the, the actual um, like written pitch, for example, and making, making sure that it's checking off some of their, um, uh, you know, the things that they're looking for, that kind of stuff for sure. Okay. But uh, I, I would imagine that, uh, that, that humans are listening to it. I mean, they're all curated by humans. I, I, I would assume. And then we have the whole prediction service that works inside of Spotify that predicts what you want to listen to next based on what you've listened to before. It's very much like Google uh, suggesting and something you just talked about that it heard you talking about. And yeah, and that's all of that's the beautiful, beautiful thing about AI, because it's like this, this algorithm knows exactly what I want to listen to. And, and yeah. it's really, really good. I mean, the, su the suggestive AI algorithm on Spotify is amazing. Uh, you know, I'll put one track on that I like, and then it'll feed me five more that I haven't heard before that I'm just like, damn, this is awesome. It's really, really good. And then the downside is how much on Spotify is AI generated already that we are starting to listen to or that you might hear is any lo-fi being generated by computers is is any music being, I mean, you hear this every day that there is AI music and they're trying to crack down on it or maybe not or. Well, I think there's definitely AI music on, on Spotify. I mean, th there's, inter I mean, I don't know um, if you've list if you've, yeah, it's coming back to the discussion of like what is actually AI generated and what's not. Um, I've been keeping a close eye on like uh, some of the actual AI generators like Ava, for example, is something that I've yep. been using uh, once in a while. Pretty cool. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I imagine that that some people write tracks using Ava and then they upload it to Spotify. Sure. Um, but I think one thing that you'll see maybe in the future to kind of um, put, put up some guardrails against some of the problems that I was speaking about earlier is that we're going to be able to use AI to detect what it is AI generated and what's not. So I think that putting some kind of like watermark on on an AI generated uh, like source might be helpful um, when for for everybody, you know, for, for people like say for music supervisors, like they'll yeah. probably want to know what's age AI generated and what's not, right? So yeah. Yeah. something to think about. So that's that's AI and Spotify. And I think that's something that we're dealing with already <clears throat> uh, in there. The other thing I want to, another thing I want to talk about here was AI versus production, where does it, and we've kind of talked about this already about how producers are using things like Logic and or Ozone and different tools. And you just mentioned Ava, which if you haven't checked out any videos, YouTube's about Ava, it's pretty crazy stuff. I, I show those videos in our in our class at school and, and, and it blows people's minds that, you know, this classical music that's being written is being played by orchestra and it was all written by a computer based on listening to what thousands of scores, you mm -hmm. know, and it just, and then it comes up with this thing, which is pretty much how we all make it, right? We listen yeah. to thousands of tunes and then we make it, but, um, you know, will there become tools? And I think the answer is yes, because there already are, but that clients use instead of paying producers. And I think that's already happening. Um, and Ozone is one of them, Drummer is another one. Um, can you get away from paying a drummer by using a drum? programmer and I think that's a already a, of course is that AI you know it's hard to to quantify yeah I'm curious to see where that goes um, that that's where I think things could get pretty interesting like you know using AI to like generate like a beat uh, or something like that that you could use effectively in, in a track um, I wonder, yeah, what the future is for like sample packs and stuff like that and like and like splice for example, you know. Um, when you have AI that could just kind of generate sounds and one shots or loops based on like your descript description, right? So th that'll be an interesting uh, trajectory. 
And with all the listening things, the content IDs and the listening on SoundCloud and the listening on all the places, where will that all fall? We don't know. Yeah, man. I, st I still feel like clients want a producer. They don't want a program. If they wanted a program, they would just buy the program. But I think this is where we, we, we can't replace the human, is when a human wants to work with another human. And um, whether that human uses AI tools or not, um, again, we get back to this thought of genuine, authentic, human-made music. And it's not, a, it's not a reaction against AI. It's just always <clears throat> been a thing that we want. I don't think Motion Array is saying they, they want uh, authentic uh, acoustic tracks uh, as part of the tracks because they're afraid of AI. I think they're doing it because they need, they need more organic material than just the loops that anybody can throw together. Well, they're, they're doing it because that's what their clients want. That's what yep. they're doing it for their, for their users, not for them, right? Like there's yep. all that they do is to serve the, the people that come to, uh, to them to, get great music and what great music is, is, is human generated ideas. It's that, it's that simple. Um, and that's why I'm not worried about it. I mean, I, th I think people are really kind of freaking out about it, but I, but I personally think that we have many years to come where, you know, human ingenuity is just going to, is just going to be the winner. Um, and that raw energy, you know, that, that, that realness is, it comes from humanity. And like, I, I think that the point in which, uh, AI is able to kind of match, that ingenuity um, is probably it's that's probably something that's going to happen like post my lifetime. Uh, I still think that you've just got all these humans on the earth who want to be artists and they want to be the artists that they are. They don't want to be. Uh, and so the artists want to be artists and they want producers to be producers. And I don't think that except for monetary reasons, they might choose to use some AI service that works without them having to pay that much. But I think in general, music producers are still going to have a lot of work because there are just, uh, unless people are getting so adept at the tools that they don't need uh, other people. But I still think that artists are going to want to work with other artists, other producer artists, and that's not going to go away. Yeah, and I think that curation, curation of, of great you know, music that's at the cutting edge of, of quality and, and like, and is, is still going to be a great business model. Uh, because I think what you're going to see is you're going to see a lot of sites that kind of, um, are able to pump out <clears throat> like AI kind of, you know, derivative sort of material. Um, and you're going to have people be, you're going to have a, a group of people that are perfectly, uh, happy to use that kind of uh, music in the backgrounds of their YouTube videos and whatever, and that that'll be fine. But you're yeah. always going to have this wider set of wider demographic of folks that want really good music for um, their videos. Uh, like you know, like that's why Artlist is such a is such a successful model because yeah. because the truth is is that you can go and get tons of like free you know, kind of subpar music for your videos. You don't have to go and get an artless subscription to go get free music for your uh, background music for your videos as a content mm -hmm. creator. But it doesn't matter because people want quality. People want something really, really good. And they want something that's, uh, that's, that's, you know, being made by humans who are good at what they do that, yeah. at, at the end of the day. Speaking of that, let's talk about a place where AI is, it's going to be very hard I think for AI to invade this particular thing, and that is live performance. I yeah. don't think that AI can replace human performance unless you're going to see an AI performance on purpose. Uh, I think there are uh, things where we, we watch movies and things like that, but when you go to a live performance, you're not there to watch a movie or a video or a computer screen. You're there to watch a physical person do something. And by the way, when I typed AI cannot replace human uh, performance, I accidentally, it, it read, my phone read it as, hey, I. So uh, it, it, the iPhone is not the, the, we're not quite there yet, folks, if, if I can't say AI on the phone and, and uh, the, I, the newest iPhone doesn't, can't tell what I'm saying. So I, uh, that particular <laughs> AI did not work. But 
Um, I think, you know, there might be tools again that somebody, you know, you see people using loopers and stuff and they've done that for years where they use loopers to, to do performances on stage. And, and there are even people re using uh, software on stage to, to play instead of guitars and, and drums and stuff. And you have electronic groups and stuff. And people use computers and tracks and stuff all the time. But I don't think that's the same. Uh, at, and, and people who use tracks are probably not as interesting to a lot of people as people who who uh, are play, are singing live and playing live and have bands live. It's it's an it's another deep future thing. You know, it's a, it's another like beyond my lifetime. Yeah, maybe like there'll there'll be like like hologram uh you know, uh you can go watch Jimi Hendrix play Monterey Pop Festival uh you know, live and and they'll re yes. recreate the entire thing. And I mean, we've had some semblance of that like I think uh you know, who did it? Who, who like there was like a someone brought Tupac uh like yeah. back from the dead or something like that and for like a holographic um, thing at Coachella or something like that. I, I can't remember what it was, but those things might become more popular over time and they might be able to do a really good job of recreating some of uh, some of these artists like posthumously. Uh, but, um, you know, I think, yeah, in, in our lifetime, like I don't think that AI is going to replace live musicians. I think the real soon. question is, can AI sell T-shirts? That's going to be the real. Can it move merch uh, at the show? That's going to be the real question for live performance. But I think this one is fairly easy for right now that yeah, you're not about to uh, to go. I mean, the, the, op, the, chain, the different thing might be there is if you have a live band with a, a gimmick of a, of a hologram <clears throat> or something at a, at a small club. But uh, even that is going to just be a very small sample size use. You know, I don't think in our life, or at least in the next 20 years, we're gonna be seeing, we're gonna be packing arenas for a hologram, you know? Uh, so we'll, we'll see, maybe we're completely wrong here. Totally. Um, last one, or one of the last ones here, education. Um, will students pay digital teachers to learn? Well, we know that they kind of do already. We're, we're both digital teachers a little bit. We have courses and we have um, uh, other materials that people can buy and, uh, you know, that's pretty much already available. Um, what are your thoughts about that? Well, I mean, yeah, it's a good question. I haven't really thought about Because a lot so of the people watching this channel who are musical are also teaching lessons. They're also, they might have YouTube channels or be thinking about developing a YouTube channel where they can teach and do similar things to what we do. And, and I think it's obvious that people will pay to, uh, like, for instance, if we're talking about a faceless video, mm -hmm. you know, where someone's just talking, I watched a guy, uh, one of the guys I follow on YouTube, describe how to complete, completely make a faceless video using uh, AI. And he had chat, chat GBT, you know, read the, uh, make a script. And then he had uh, all these different programs, uh, a digital AI, make a, an AI person and an AI you know, and, and sync the vocal, yeah. the, the, the computer made vocal to the computer made face and all this kind of stuff, you know, seems very, seems like a lot of work to me, <laughs> but, um, apparently, you know, you're going to do this in 15 minutes. So, uh, are we, are we at risk of being taught by avatars or is this again, what students want to have a person, a, a Stevie B or Eric Copeland or Graham Cochran or whoever teaching them in their uh, course that they buy? You know. Well, it's not, it's not, I mean, we got to remind people, it's like, it's not the information all, so much. It's the, it's who's teaching it. I think so. Um, you know, I, I, there's certain YouTubers who style and of delivery and I, I just really like, and I'm able to kind of, uh, just enjoy absorbing the information that they, they give because they, they express it in a way that, that appeals to me, you know? Right. Um, and I feel like you can get the same information from many, many different sources, but ultimately it's, it's who's, uh, disseminating the information that, that really counts at the end of the day. And that is the human connection. We're always coming back to the human connection. We're always coming back to that. And, and, and I, I should point out that, uh, the iPhone also did not correct chat GPT when I entered that in, I, I it entered in something else. So it's not, AI is not taking over on the iPhone just yet, but I will say this, um, yeah, we are totally, uh, keep coming back to this same thing that there is a human element that we want in music, not just uh, 
that what we hear, but what we see, what we um, know personally, and I think in all these things, we've talked about stock and how Motion Array is really looking for organic type of stuff and how sync is same and all these things up to live performance. They're all, eventually we get back to people really needing that human connection. As much as we are all, like you said, uh, but we've been inside now for years because of the pandemic and everything else, and we're just getting back out to deal with other humans. Uh, some of us have become quite fine being in our little holes here and not dealing with humans. Uh, and as you said, it's going to be a different experience when you go out and do this gig. You know? Yeah, totally, totally. But still, yeah. they're coming to see you guys and see you live, you know? Yeah, isn't that beautiful? Yeah, I mean... <laughs> It still exists. It still exists. It's great. Yeah, I think you know. Uh, there's a there's a weird future. There's a there's a weird future ahead of us, um, and something that looks unrecognizable by the time that we're I'm like wrapping up this this journey of life. You know, probably yeah. if if I get the if I get to live to you know be an old old man. Hopefully, I do sometime when I'm ninety or a hundred years old. Hopefully, I'll be looking at the world and be like, well, back in my day, we used to actually write music. I used to play guitar. We used to go see live musicians. <laughs> we did this uh, thing called a podcast. <laughs> Me and this old guy, we did this podcast, <laughs> and, and uh, he's long dead. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, it, the future looks weird. There's no doubt about it. Um, but. Uh, I think, you know, I, I'm really not that worried about, uh, about sync licensing going anywhere or, uh, re, you know, production music going anywhere in the, in the near future. I would say if you're worried about how AI might affect your income, I would encourage you to be as human as you can be. Exactly. Um, really dive into the side of you that can't be replaced. And a lot of times that means your voice, your playing, your uh, your humanness, you know, uh, really take advantage of that. I think that's one thing that you do very well, Steve, with your music and why you have so much success on Motion Array and Artlist is because there's a real artist personality to you and the people that we know that are doing really good in all of this stuff are have that element to them, whether mm -hmm. it's Lester or whoever else you want to talk about, um, that it's really based in their, their ability not their programming skills necessarily, even though you, you're, you're all great cr programmers as well, but there is a, a uh, organic ability that you have that, that is a big part of why you're successful. All right, everybody, well, that's about all I got here on my list. Anything else, Steve? Yeah, it just kind of remind me of like, uh, I started to jump back into the, into the conversation. I'll wrap it up after this, but like I used to, um, I, you, know, you, you know how you hear a lot of people kind of hate on on DJs like you, you hear a lot of live musicians like kind of like uh trash DJs because they're not they're not actually like playing any instruments or whatever um I have a lot of DJ friends here in Vancouver and um I think like a common question like kind of like a like a snobby sort of attitude that that uh like like you know musicians will take towards me, uh, DJs is like well what's the point in going to see a DJ when I can just listen to canned music you know what's the point in going to see uh, a DJ because they're not doing any work; they're just standing up on stage and and pressing like the play button on their computer, and it always comes back to the human element. People go to see these DJs because the DJs are personalities, and they're 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 curating a playlist for you, and that's their their human input into the whole uh, into the whole experience. So I think that you know even if I'm just using pre-recorded samples from Splice, there's still a, a human curation element that comes from my own sort of, uh, you know, humanity that I could take these sounds and throw them together in a way that's exciting for you to listen to. Uh, even if I don't play any instruments, no singing, no guitar, bass, nothing, uh, there's still a human element at play. Um, and think that's the most important thing. Also, the we have to think about that. And, and this kind of plays into the live element, but if you're at a cafe and I don't know, France or, or Italy or something. It's just a small little place and there's a person there with a guitar. That's gonna be, I mean, the only way to replace that is just to turn some music on the speakers. But it's not gonna be the same as having a human sitting there with a guitar and playing and sure. or singing. And I think that's gonna be very, very hard to replace. I should, I should mention this as an outro. We have been scared of technology replacing us since the invention of 
the organ. Uh, totally. When the organ was developed, or, uh, uh, musicians went crazy because they thought, how are we going to be, we're going to be out of a gig in the church because we can't, now the organ can play all the parts. Yeah. The printing press completely thought, everyone thought they were going to go out of business because the printing press could just make books of everything. Yeah. It didn't. It only expanded our knowledge and everything. And it just goes on and on. The phonograph the television or the radio and the television and all the things that are being invented. Everyone's always thinking CDs put cassettes out of their misery, uh, streaming put C CDs out of their misery, or I should say downloads did and then streaming did. So there's always some new technology that's coming along that we think, oh boy, here we go. It's going to put us out of, out of work. And AI is just the newest version of that. Um, so I, I think we just need to keep those examples in mind before we totally jump off the cliff yeah, uh, yeah. with with ai uh thoughts so yeah that's a that's a great place to to end it i think that the, and yeah don't freak out i would say don't don't freak out and don't uh don't be like a like a like a nihilist oh what's the point anymore well i don't know that's not a good attitude to have I see a few people <laughs> in the in the various comments of the videos anymore well, that's the point it's all it's it's like it's it's over in five years it's done Okay. Well, okay. well, in five years, we'll see. We'll still be making music over here and, <laughs> and hopefully making music income as well and, and uh, enjoying so. what we do. So, yeah. All right, everybody. Well, thanks so much for listening and for watching. We'll see you next time on the podcast. See you guys. Bye. See you.